Huh, man, safe sex is a myth? Must be why I now mysteriously have all of the STDs. If you don't know how exactly safe sex is just like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot, luckily for you, there's the early 90s series of videos, Life on the Edge, starring Dr. James Dobson, founder of Focus on the Family. Focus on the Family is the leading organization in proving to society that one of the only good organizations with the word family in it is Family Video. This doesn't at all look like a tape starring couples who have been kidnapped and forced to pose for James Dobson, the man who looks like Dave Thomas made from discarded corn cobs. Look how affectionate they are. He's looking right at the camera. She is severely put off by Dobson masturbating in the corner. There's plenty of other entries in this series, notably pornography, addictive, progressive, deadly. You'll just have to trust James and his massive porno collection made for research. Plus, there's emotions. Can you trust them? Yeah, sure. Let's take advice on emotions from the guy who's often triggered by the Super Bowl. Today, though, we're focusing on the myth of safe sex, or possibly B-roll from Cannibal the Musical, one of the two. Let's go, family. One of us is gonna fall and break every bone in our body, and those who don't are all getting sprained ankles. But at least we aren't having sex. This is way safer. Just listen to the music. Well, that settles it. If you want to prevent sex from happening, just play that song. So is this about sex, or rock climbing, or bad music? On second thought, maybe I'll try this without a rope. If this music continues, I wouldn't mind plummeting to my death. As someone who hates heights, I'll take my chances with a condom. Sure, you can be proud of yourself, but Tom Cruise is currently laughing at your so-called accomplishment. And if you think this is a rock climbing video, you're in for a rude awakening. The question is, is safe sex really safe? My question is, how is that supposed to teach me how to tie a rope? In this lecture, Dr. Dobson teams up with Dr. Joe McElhaney, a gynecologist. Line up, ladies. He's the Dr. T of touchy uncle sweaters. This is two professionals at work, kids, or so they think. A couple of years ago, I was appointed to the teen pregnancy prevention panel. Why? God, the audience all look like they're posing for the VHS cover of this thing. James, however, wasn't a great fit for the teen pregnancy panel because they were a bunch of liberal heathens. Fifteen of the eighteen thought the answer to the problem of teen pregnancy and abortion and all those things. Yeah, condoms. What fools. How dare they not have a strict, just chop off your dick policy. So James resigned his position in protest, and at least some audience members are appearing to not be buying the words of Dobson and his creepy friends. Um, foremost authorities on sexually transmitted disease and on... The hell is this fool talking about? He's dressed in a sweater that makes him look like a perfectly shaved nutsack. Let's bring out Dr. McElhaney, who looks like Ned Flanders dressing as Marv Albert for Halloween. An epidemic is an infectious uh, disease that's widespread, that's uh, affecting many, many people. In other words, you should probably pass out condoms after this. These kids look like they're sweating bullets while keeping from scratching their crabs. The doc says there's more STDs now than in previous decades, and with our help, we can get hundreds of thousands more infected. They got statistics, people. 30 to 35 to 40 percent of sexually active single people are infected with chlamydia. In other words, the keep it in your pants method isn't working. STDs are spreading. So much of this feels like it should be ended with citation needed. The rate of syphilis now is just about where it was before penicillin was discovered. That's right. Hear that, buttercream gang? Look at what your buttercreaming has caused. Their titles say doctor, but they act like they just read something off of Wikipedia. When syphilis is not treated and then causes... Uh, Mental illness, uh, they used to call it dementia praecox, but this mental illness at uh, 50, 60 years of age. On the bright side, that turns you into a huge James Dobson fan. But they got friends who can vouch for them. Uh, one of my associates just this last month had a baby that was born 
the, the woman it was negative for her syphilis test when she got pregnant. You're stuttering. That totally makes me believe these people exist. Whenever you see someone nodding in the audience, you can hear the word <laughs> going through their head, especially when listening to this. Today, we're seeing chlamydia in our offices all the time. The hell is wrong with your office? When McElhaney is talking about patients with multiple sex partners, you can feel the erection in Dobson's eyes. They all got a fetish for absolutes. If anyone has sex outside of marriage with someone who's had sex before, you, they, will almost always get a sexually transmitted disease. Sound advice, which is why we now all have AIDS and the only thing that could have stopped it is a marriage license. Also, ladies, this is your fault. Now, you're saying that it isn't necessary to be uh, loose, to sleep around. Nice fingering, James. This is like two old men pitching the script for It Follows. They talk about how many people don't even know they're infected, which ironically makes this a really great commercial for condoms. When they talk about genital warts and HPV, their audience looks so ill-informed they probably think the bad guy from Mario 2 is growing on their balls. We're all just having a good time here with cancer and all. He does have a chance of getting penile cancer. And that's bad cancer, guys. You know, we'd all agree. I uh, think they believe uh, you. I, I <laughs> <laughs> They're laughing through their fear of their dick falling off. I miss Estes Perkle. If he hosted this, we would have seen our 12th graphic castration by now. Apparently, when you get diagnosed with HPV, the first thing you do is write to James Dobson. Uh, I have a letter here from a woman who has this, and she wrote to me... You mean you wrote to yourself? While I fully acknowledge my grave error and sin and suffer for it daily. Oh yeah, a woman wrote that and not a creepy old man who likes yelling at sinful sitcoms. In one of your broadcasts, you covered the fact that it can give cervical dysplasia, leading to cancer of the cervix in teenagers. Yes, most people with an STD like to take time out in their letters to promote other James Dobson broadcasts. I mean, this is totally a real person, you guys. At this point, I'd like to give a few personal details about myself. I'm a 25-year-old college graduate. Yeah, sure. I believe a 25-year-old woman wrote that more than I believe a college graduate did. He's reading it like he's thinking, yes, I am a great voice for 25-year-old women. And this, again, is the face of, I believe this letter. So what say you of this real letter, McElhaney? Are you hearing stories like that? Jim, Why I... is this not in the press? Yes, James, you send me those letters all the time, and the media is starting to notice they all have the same handwriting. They're just trying to save people here. We'd sure like to save those kids from this kind of problem, or save those young people from this kind of problem. But their answer is safe sex. Our answer is way better. Lock them in the basement and chain them to a radiator. It doesn't take long for these two men to start talking like people rejected by the prom queen. How many of you knowing that if someone had AIDS, they were the person you'd lusted for for 15 years and this person finally said they'd have sex with you? And not one person in that audience raised their hand until a little bit later one person way in the back did. Oh, but inside they were raising their hands and their penises. But whatever, condoms break, so why bother? You're just keeping them in your billfold too long. They okay. tend to put them in the billfold and leave it there. That's what does right. that do to the... It destroys them and they break. Yeah. Okay, well, sounds like that person is never having sex anyway, so what does it matter? Trust us, ladies, we know big words like percentages. Really, only 6 or 8% of people in those studies say they use them all the time, so that means the 50% that use them are missing them, and yet 20 to 25% of people get pregnant using condoms, or even Did for birth control. you guys catch that now? I know he's a doctor, but he talks more like Billy Bob Thornton playing a character who likes describing lampshades made of skin. Maybe they should just take a cue from Seinfeld and teach girls about determining who is sponge-worthy. But then, no one would ever have sex with James Dobson. And with these classic jokes... You know what they call people who use condoms to prevent babies? What? Parents. Oh. <laughs> 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 the audience for America's Funniest Home Videos has better standards for comedy. 
But that show is part of the evil, dishonest media. They're saying you all are going to all have sex anyway. Believe me, that's what they think. The people that are teaching about this in schools and colleges are saying every one of you kids are going to be having sex soon. Because they probably already are having sex. See, that dude is now regretting sex under the bleachers because he made a bet to turn this girl into prom queen, and now he's going to owe this dude 50 bucks. And when we come back, circle jerk. After these messages, we'll be right back. We are back and in good time because James and Joe are super pissed. And that's why your blood pressure goes up when they start talking about safe sex. Yes, as you can see, steam is coming out of our ears. My glasses are fogging up like they do in my favorite steam room. These guys would have a heart attack from a fart. And if you choose to have sex, there is no safe way to do it. So why bother trying? After all, when people practicing abstinence crack and have sex and aren't taught proper safety, that's not considered a failure. But a broken condom means you should never teach safe sex at all. Just listen to these fictitious worst case scenarios. At an early age, before she's had a chance to bear children, she may have a hysterectomy and who knows where it goes from there. Well, it, it just makes me cry for that for that person because she's crying at the same time while we're talking. She's probably crying because you two are airing out her shit on videotape. And these are the last two people I want to hear saying words like flowers and wieners. The fimbria, the delicate flower-like opening that receives the egg was all destroyed. There was none of it there. It looked like little wiener balloons sitting in there instead of the delicate little worm-like things that would be a fallopian tube. Yes, just take the nice little wiener and rub it against a dirty flower. Then take that donut and suckle on it a little. Get that glaze off of your lips. Mm -hmm. It's what I'm paying you for. Anyway, Your Honor, I think James is leading the witness. Did you tell me that the average woman who gets AIDS has had sex with only two men? And remember, audience, that's the woman's fault, not the men who gave her AIDS. Trust us, this dude has the same look on his face when he stares for hours at wieners at the grocery store, which is also the woman's fault. It also said that the women who were told they had AIDS we're not changing their sexual practices. Right? It's up to the woman to stop having sex, and not all of the AIDS dudes. Now they tell him how AIDS is a death sentence, and audience, with your inexperience in sex education, we can kill lots more people, because we're scientists. And I'm, in a sense, a scientist. I guess you'd consider physicians that to some extent. Science does not have the answer for this. If you watch the newspaper... Watch the newspaper... Oh, they hate science now, though. That was quick. The solution for these diseases is not going to be in science, ever. Sure, just close your legs and pray the AIDS away. That's better than that science shit. Now let's turn to our pick of the litter audience. Why do schools tell us to use uh, condoms when they know they're only 90% or they say 90% effective when we're dealing with 100% deadly disease? Abstinence is never taught. Thank you. You read that question we wrote for you perfectly. These kids are the broken condoms of society. The incredible thing is that Planned Parenthood and organizations like that are given $150 million to tell you about safe sex. Good. That means we're not a totally stupid people. The questions continue where someone asks a leading question and Dr. Joe looks the same way he would if he were chasing her with a net in an alley. But body language is interesting here. I like how Dr. Joe backs away from Dobson as if Dobson came on to him behind the scenes. People. Joe, do you worry about the surgery that you're doing? Get away, James Dobson. You look like if the Heaven's Gate cult was sponsored by vanilla ice cream. These situations they're asking about are getting extreme. I, was, I wanted to ask you about the possibility of getting AIDS from your dentist like the lady did down in Florida. And um, exactly what are the effects of heavy petting? Well, good news, you just won an amazing lawsuit against your dentist. And James is the perfect person to talk about heavy petting. It's what he does to his sweaters every night. I like how James moves right behind the podium, like he's hiding his erection when talking about heavy petting. <laughs> Don't get him started on holding hands. Just taking hold of a girl's hand is stimulating. Spoken like someone who knows a thing or two about hand jobs. They tell us if you spend about 300 hours with someone, you're likely to have sex with them. They know all about the differences between men and women. So after a one-night stand or a brief encounter 
The man walks away having gotten what he wanted. The woman walks away having not gotten what she wanted, which was intimacy. No, women also know what's up with a one-night stand. James is just trying to convince himself that anyone would miss him after sex. He hates the sexual revolution like a guy who goes home with no phone numbers hates speed dating. That's why I have felt that the sexual revolution is the biggest joke men ever played on women. That's because you're so repulsive you couldn't even get laid in the summer of love 1969. And here's another sentence I never wanted to hear from them. Let's talk about date rape. Let's talk a little bit about date rape. That's, That's another great concern of mine. Mm, they're going to ask to look in my medicine cabinet. So, how seriously do they take rape? I consider it a, an absolute criminal rape when a man forces himself on a woman, even if it's in a dating situation. Wow, what a noble stand. I consider rape bad. Woohoo, what a trendsetter. Hmm, yes, yes, I shall nod. Rape is bad, and everyone out there is a potential rapist. But if you do single dating, you're asking for it. Uh, single dating almost looks like uh, you're asking for it. Right, which is why double dating is key. Otherwise, that means you want to be raped. Harsh! Yeah, and I, I don't want to put all uh, the blame on the guys. We've been pretty hard on the guys here, but the... No, you have not! Unless you're just talking about your most recent visit to the bathhouses. On the plus side, he's talking to an audience that probably isn't going to make it past masturbating into a sock. This whole thing is a collection of words that I never wanted to hear them say. Next up on the list, sweet little girl. I'll see them go to other physicians who will call them sweet little girl and things like that that infuriates me. Ew! Relax, kids. If you slip up, you could always just become a virgin again. Become a secondary virgin? You not only become a secondary virgin physically, but spiritually, you become a primary virgin. And if you go rock climbing and pass on having sex with an empty bottle of Mountain Dew, you're an extreme virgin. Because science isn't going to cure STDs, but Jesus will cure you of no longer being a virgin. Let's go to the mail for some more totally real people. And I'm getting a large amount of mail like this. Listen to this. This is fairly short. I wrote it last minute before the taping. I'm a 15-year-old girl and I'm still a virgin. I want to know what sex is like and I don't think I can wait till I'm married. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sex-crazed 15-year-old girls often write to Justin Bieber, Harry Styles, or Dr. James Dobson. And this is another letter that goes against the point of this tape. I know I can get VD or AIDS or get pregnant, but I'll pray that that won't happen. Did, did this jackass just give us the definitive reason why we need to teach safe sex and condoms? Plus, I love how this next leading question totally fails. Do you believe AIDS and the HPV virus are punishment from God for man's immoralness? I personally don't believe that God brought those in and used them as a club to beat people with. God, that question was too extreme even for the host. But it's an obvious question to come out of this face. <laughs> and the moral is, if you listen to what they say, you too can grow up to be the Hardy Boys sex-repulsed incestuous uncles. My wife and I, Shirley, were virgins when we got married. I thank the Lord for that. <laughs> All the way through, been married 31 years. There's never been anybody else in either of our lives. It is a closed relationship. Yeah, you're trying too hard to convince me of that. If you were any straighter, Leslie Jordan would play you in a movie. I'd say these kids are as ready for the real world as they'll ever be. Do you all have the courage the next time a teacher begins talking to you about safe sex to take them on? Yes. Good job. They'll immediately be taken down by their teachers and fail their classes. Now let's smoke a shitload of weed and bang until dawn. And those who aren't are going to jump off of this cliff so the pain of their three-week-long blue balls can end. A lot's changed in the years since the myth of safe sex. Mainly, HIV is no longer a death sentence thanks to science, and no thanks to Dr. James Dobson's car boot for the genitals, which is pretty much the best criticism you can give of this special. I'd like to see these two guys talk about sex toys the same way Gary and Phil talk about He-Man. 
No need to seek out this tape at the local Goodwill stores. The whole series is on YouTube for viewing, including When God Doesn't Make Sense. Must be where James Dobson tries explaining to us his own existence. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash stonegremlinproductions and follow us on Twitter at the Cinema Snob. As for right now, though, I am going to go put a condom on a cucumber.